You run around this city like it's your damn shooting gallery. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? You act like it's a playground. You beat up the bullies with your fists. You throw them in jail. Everybody calls you a hero, right? And then a month, a week, a day later, they're back on the streets doing the yeah. same goddamn so, thing. So you just put them in the morgue. You're goddamn right I do. You ever doubt yourself, Frank? Not even for a second. Really? Frank Castle, a.k.a. the Punisher, a.k.a. the hero to every blue-collar law enforcement, military swinging around for miles. Frank mother Castle. Seeing as all of you read the title prior to clicking on this video, you've probably figured out I'm here to talk about the problem that comes with making a Punisher TV show or a movie. Now, many of you are already saying, we already have a Punisher that had two seasons of his own show and a reoccurring role in Daredevil Season 2 that could easily be made into the MCU. And you know what? I hear you. And trust me, I really did enjoy that run of the Punisher, as flawed and as restricted it was at times. I need you to hear me out. Is what we got on screen true to the character? Was it portrayed the way we should have seen it? Would it still have a place in today's MCU? Look, a lot of us, myself included, want to see our boy Johnny Bernthal giving his take on our beloved antihero in an MCU movie or a show. I mean, in my own opinion, I think John Bernthal is the guy to play Frank Castle. But more on that later. To rephrase my question, I ask you, should Frank Castle be in the current state of the MCU? My answer is no. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, before all the monster drinking Punisher Skull wearing Kyles out there flame the living shit out of me, or before any of my fellow veterans come at me with some tomfoolery, let me explain. See, I don't have a problem with John Bernthal reprising his role, I don't have a problem with the Punisher having a role in the MCU. My problem lies with how they handle the character and the risks they are not willing to take to do the character justice. I can honestly say that the MCU, or Disney, depending on how you look at it, is not ready to take an honest leap of faith on the Punisher. To understand what I'm talking about, we need to take a look back in time at the Netflix shows and look at the current state of the MCU by comparing the Punisher to current or soon to be released shows and movies that potentially outline what we should expect if the Punisher came to the MCU. To understand the character himself, we're going to need to take a look at the comics to build a foundation. By no means am I the resident Punisher expert, but I feel like the comics I've pulled and the comics that have been recommended to me will do the job in giving us a basis to work off of. I should also preface something, I might lose a lot of you here, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm not one of those guys that wants a character straight out of the comics onto the silver screen. I mean, seeing certain pages come to life is a beautiful kind of full circle thing. But for the most part, I still do believe that anyone who decides to tackle a comic book character, whether it be in a TV show, a movie, or even a video game, still needs to do their due diligence in researching and understanding the character from the source material, aka the comics, and then turning it into their own thing. The beauty of seeing your character come to life through completely different eyes can have a marvelous everlasting impact on you. Look at how many different actors have played your favorite character at one point or another. Now, if you're someone who prefers a more recent character who's only had maybe one body of work, this probably doesn't pertain to you. But to all my Batman, Spider-Man, and hell, even the Fantastic Four fans, you'll understand that the reasons may vary as to why you enjoy that take on the character, but the fact of the matter is that it still stemmed from some writer, some director, some actor who interpreted the character in their own way and made it unique to them. Which is true art to see your character come to life in different ways. All we can hope for is that some sort of homage is paid to that character in the end. Look, as far as like going on in the future, it's, it's, it's a character that I really feel like um, uh, I have sort of in my bones and in my heart. Um, I, uh, I, I think really it's not... I, I don't look at things in terms of, I, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity and what sort of happens in the future isn't about kind of whether they want to do it or not again. Like that's, I, I don't really prescribe anything to those kinds of decisions. It's just about, our, you know, if they do do it, are we going to be able to get it right? Is it going to be dark enough? Is it going to be gritty enough? Are we going to give the fans and the folks that this character means so much to, are we going to give them what they deserve? And if the answer is yes, like, man, oh man, I, I, I would love that. Well, that wraps it up, right? Nah, I'm kidding. But seriously, why would John Bernthal say that if there wasn't something a little off about the Netflix show? Also, I commend the actor for knowing the character well enough to understand the flaws with the direction of the character. And this understanding of how much the character means to the fans all proves his dedication to the role, which is why I think he's perfect for the role. Call me biased, but I like him. Now let's rip the band-aid off. I'm not here to say the Punisher show is a bad show or anything like that, because honestly, the cast, the story, and the atmosphere really make the show enjoyable. I mean, really, the acting is solid and the sheer amount of realism they inject into the show is something I really appreciated, especially from a veteran's point of view. 
But I'm not here to get onto a tangent about that. See, the biggest problem I have with the show is how humane they gradually try to make Frank and the fact they have to find ways for Frank to be the Punisher. In the beginning of Season 1, we see Frank end his crusade after eliminating all the parties responsible for his family's death to his knowledge. After this, Frank tries to move on with his life while still being haunted by his memories and crippled by his survivor's guilt, as well as a lingering war crime that he was forced to commit whether he knows it or not. Frank is then drawn out by Micro to help take down the actual people responsible for the death of Frank's family, as well as the people responsible for forcing Micro into hiding. See, on one hand, for the sake of story arcs and continuing the story from Daredevil, having Frank retire the Punisher school after killing all the gangs is already a really unique direction, but was it the right move for the character? I don't know, I don't write any stories, and maybe I'm not even qualified to talk about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. But the thing you should know about the Punisher that this man has a never-ending mission to rid the world of scum. One target at a time, one faction at a time, and a whole lot of bodies at a time. And if you didn't know, I'm talking about the comics now. Look, to say it straight, Frank don't fuck around, man. And his mission does not change. The path of our beloved anti-hero's one-man army is dark, endless, and most of all, lonely. The relationships Frank does keep are either purely business or have a means to an end. Of course, there are few people he respects and has special relationships with but still lonely, nonetheless. Now look, you should also know that the writer for the show decided against using any version of Frank from the comics. Instead, he decided to take the character into the direction he thought matched what was laid down in Daredevil Season 2. Now, I believe this is where the real splinter of the character's nature started. See, because Daredevil really captured Frank in a fantastic way. Using Daredevil as a contrast to the Punisher, or Frank in contrast to Matt considering it's Matt's show, regardless, they really knew how to bring the light to the origin of our boy Frank and the reasoning to the misunderstood madness that is the Punisher. The Frank I saw in Daredevil really left me with high hopes. Just look at the lines and dialogue they even referenced straight from the comics. Take the shot, Red, take the shot! No! You don't do it, his death's on you. Either way, you're a killer. Two! What kind of choice is that? The kind I make every time I pull the trigger. The kind I'm gonna make right now. Oh man, this is like one of those full circle things I was telling you guys about that I really like. Um, in the comic, Frank was getting tired of Daredevil shit as well constantly battling out daredevil always lecturing frank so he did the same thing he did in the show or i guess i would say the show did in the comic so he ties up uh or chains up daredevil on a rooftop and they they have the similar exchange of words and um as you see it transpire that's what happened honestly choosing daredevil to introduce the punisher was a move more tactical than i first knew when doing this research i noticed how often frank and matt have conversations that reveal more and more about frank Yes, we're constantly hearing Frank's thoughts throughout the comic, but if you have a chimp brain like yours truly over here, then you'd know that he doesn't necessarily give us an explanation for the reasons he does things. But it's up to us, the readers, to learn through these thoughts and reactions to come to an explanation on our own. So when Frank explains himself to other characters, which, by the way, completely ignores people when asked anything about his reasoning, but regardless, when Frank does decide to give us some insight, it is pretty... It is pretty meaningful to the reader to understand how he explains himself to others because Frank's not really, he's not a liar, you know, he has no reason to. But I've uh, picked a couple of pages out of the comics I want to share with you guys to get a better idea of how uh, Frank thinks and um, how he explains himself to other characters. Of course, there's millions of other ways to explain it, but these are the ones I really liked. So uh, let's get on with it. So this is a direct continuation of when he's talking to Matt on the rooftop when he chained him up. And um, just to go over it briefly... Uh, they're still arguing and Matt says, No, nobody has to die. You don't have to do this. Dino Ganucci deserves to be taken off the streets, but legitimately, for something he's actually done. And it has to be that way, or else everything, these laws we have, the society we've built, all completely worthless. For crying out loud, man, don't you see that? Don't you see? And Frank says, on some cold shit, The thought of Dino Ganucci living one more minute is enough to drive me insane. Don't you see? And Matt says, oh my god, as he clicks back the revolver. Frank says that's the spirit. He tells us a couple of things here. So, Frank's mentality is no joke, man. Like, this isn't a game. He's not, like, you know, just trying to be a hero, trying to be some kind of little anti-hero. This is his, you know, this is his mission. He doesn't stray from the path. This is how he thinks. And uh, I think for Matt, hits him a little harder because, obviously, with that hearing of his, you can tell that Frank's not lying. And he knows he's dead serious about how he feels about criminals. You know, there's no redemption for them. It's just, this is the end. And um, him clicking back the revolver, if you guys aren't watching, um, he clicks back the revolver he's holding in his taped up hand, which kind of tells you that Matt knows it's probably gonna end only one way is he's gotta kill the Punisher to stop him from killing another. And Frank says that's the spirit because he knows that too. 
he's going along with it. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, so next page. So Frank's still egging him on. He's telling him that the car's coming up, and uh, Matt's still trying to plea with him. He tells him, Castle, listen to me. Stop this now while you still can, Castle. Listen to me, will you? I can't let you do this. Castle. And then uh, Frank says, peach of a shot. You know, he's still kind of egging him on. And Matt says, God forgive me. And he, well, this whole time, by the way, he's aiming the revolver at, at the Punisher. And um, before, Punisher told him, hey, if you're going to kill me, you're going to have to shoot me in the head because I got Kevlar. And Matt, in the final panel of this page, it shows him clicking the gun as if he's trying to shoot him. But it just clicks. Nothing happens. So next page. Uh, Frank kills Dino anyway from a sniper position that he's got in his hand. So he kills him. And he turns around to talk to Matt. And he tells him, no firing pin. You can leave the killing to me. The chains will be gone when you wake up. And then Matt's kind of confused because, you know, he's kind of at loss of what he had to do. And he's kind of shocked. And Frank gives him a Stone Cold Steve Austin to the face. And uh, didn't even give him a three-piece and a soda. He just gave him a chicken sandwich. But regardless, so this comic tells us a lot about the characters, specifically Frank and a little bit about Daredevil. So this whole thing was because Daredevil was constantly lecturing the Punisher on his methods and telling him, hey, this isn't the right way. Criminal, even criminals deserve second chances at redemption. You know, let the law handle them. Let them have their due processing. And the whole Punisher's whole thing is he acts beyond the law. He does what the law won't and can't do. And specifically, I mean, it's pretty polar opposite of the spectrum of Matt. Matt, you know, beats up criminals and he turns them in. Uh, as that's the hero mentality, typically. And Frank kills them. And so he teaches Matt a lesson that, hey, if you want to stop me from killing criminals, you're going to have to kill me. And that's the only way you're going to do it. So this whole thing was a lesson in choice. And Daredevil had to make the choice that he'd rather kill Frank than let him kill anyone else. I think it taught Matt a little bit about himself. And I'm not sure if Punisher respects him for it or not, but I think he finally understands. He finally got it through to Matt. This is how his mentality is. It's no joke, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And that's why I like this interaction with them. It kind of teaches a lot about the character and how he views other heroes. And I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of other things where he talks about heroes and stuff like that. But to me, this is really impactful. You know, he kind of gives them a taste of what the Punisher does. And... Also, I'm really glad they made this come to life in the TV show. All right, so for the next comic, I'm going to reference, uh, I'm going to leave a little text right there telling you what comic, what issue, what year, all that. So if you guys want to go back and read it. But specifically, this is from uh, Punisher 2001. It is, uh, I believe, issue 22, 23. I could be wrong. But it's the Brotherhood storyline, and this is part two. So I'll read it out loud, and I'll explain to you as I go. Recon has its moments. Weapons prep is never dull, but this, this is its own reward. Because every single muzzle flash, every gleaming case ejected from the breach, every punch of the gun butt in your shoulder means just one thing. That's another monster gone. So, great page. I like it because it uh, tells you there's uh, basically three parts to how he executes these kind of things. It's the recon, which is like the surveillance stage. Weapons prep, which is obviously like, as it sounds, he's preparing his guns for some... Uh, good old carnage and then the last part is just him executing all these fools but um his explanation is what i really like he says that's another monster gone as we see in the next page he really delves into it and maybe just maybe there will be a kid out there who can't find anyone to sell him poison or a wife who won't become a widow or a family who'll make it home alive from their picnic in the park and today will be a good day uh this tells us a lot about frank um it's pretty bare bones in terms of explanations but what he does is if he can save one life from going through what he went through or saving someone from the turmoil that's caused by these criminals and the scum of the earth, that he'll, if he can prevent them from that, that's the goal. You know, that's all he cares about. No one should have to go through what he went through. And this is his mission now. And this is his purpose. And um, he just wants to prevent that from happening to anybody else, which is uh, pretty deep, as, as basic as explanation as this is. But um, this takes me right back into season one and season two of The Punisher. So now you understand some basic foundations about the character to move forward a bit. To me, Daredevil Season 2 will forever hold a special place in my heart. On top of it being an amazing show, I really appreciated the dark, gritty realism that the show constantly conveyed with mature adult topics. To me, it's where Frank's story should have stayed. Now, when I say that they try to make Frank more humane, I don't mean he's supposed to be a robot because he's not. Actually, being human is what keeps Frank from being a perfect killing machine. If he wasn't human, he'd never make any mistakes, and deep down, Frank does have his own moral righteousness about him. 
What I mean is that you should never take away the one thing that defines Frank's life after his family's death, which is the Punisher. Thomas Jane said it best in the Punisher movie, Frank Castle is dead, he died with his family. His story is not one of revenge, but of punishment for the, what the law cannot or will not do. And I think this perfectly encapsulates Frank. I don't think the direction of Frank Castle is to try to see where he fits into this world after the events of his tragedy, but how criminals will live in his. The show makes Frank out to be someone who constantly tries to move on and live in some sort of normal life. To make our anti-hero more redeeming understand this point of view, but in reality, the life of the Punisher is cruel, gritty, and unforgiving, and one Frank must fully embrace to be the Punisher. Any tips on uh, getting into the MCU there, Korg? Uh, have a dream, uh, chase it, lose that dream, just sabotage all sorts of happiness in the pursuit of that dream, climb up to the peaks of that mountain, and when you get to the top, land at the bottom and realize you're never gonna achieve that dream, and at that point, check your emails. So moving on to how Frank fits into the scheme of things over in the MCU, you're probably asking the obvious, Hawk Diesel, Marvel is already putting out an R-rated film with Deadpool, are they not? And to that I say you're 100% correct, my friend, but in my opinion, I believe that Deadpool fits the formula very well in the favor of the MCU, and strategically, it's almost a win-win with Deadpool either way. Let me break it down to you like this. The MCU formula at this point has an almost lighthearted tone in its movies and shows, and that's not to downplay the serious moments and topics they can really delve into when they want to, such as spoilers ahead. Hawkeye's guilt and depression in his show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier touching on mental health and black culture, the realness of Bucky and Sam's real-world problems, and in Spider-Man's No Way Home when Peter finally learned the true definition of loss, and that with great power comes great responsibility as being Spider-Man. So when I say the MCU is lighthearted, I don't mean it in a derogatory manner and a downplaying stance. I just mean that they're literally known to inject comedic scenes into these movies and shows which in turn, at least for me, can give off these fun zany undertones to these otherwise serious movies or TV shows. Now the problem with it is that it's very hard to take these new characters seriously or better yet care about these characters when they've been portrayed in this manner. Is that a bad thing? I don't know, you guys tell me. I like MCU movies and shows, but even I realize the impressions it leaves. Deadpool fits in well with the MCU because look at his movies. Fun movie, breaks the fourth wall, which if you think about it, Marvel already takes a comedic pauses in between lines after a joke because they know they, they know the audience is going to laugh, which is low-key like a 3.5 wall break, but whatever. Which fits in with Deadpool, who is constantly talking that shit in general and talking directly to the audience. That could literally make Deadpool a poster boy with little worry that critics or Karens will complain about the violence or the message it's sending due to the comedy into the fourth wall breaks and they're not going to take them very serious. Now take our boy Frank for example and let's put him in comparison to Deadpool and see how he rates up if they share a rated R show or a movie. Frank's story would have dark humor not intended for children and it has no fourth wall breaks. The only thing it leaves is the violence. Now for you and myself we understand there's more to our boy than just violence but to the rest of the critics and Karens we would never hear the end of the quote unquote message it's sending to our kids and gun nuts all around he's an inspiration to them by watching the show or movie and to that i say fuck off as the great garth ennis aka my favorite punisher writer once said in defense of the punisher to critics i can see why frank's little hobby might be viewed as requiring some kind of justification but only by morons garth then goes on to explain that when you watch movies or shows that portray violence you aren't complaining because you are there for the entertainment the goal of this whole thing is to entertain and we shouldn't get so worked up over fiction he also goes on to say it's all in good fun and now you don't have to worry about a thing you can enjoy the punisher with a completely clear conscience end of quote the biggest problem with pursuing anything with frank and the mcu will boil down to two things can we even get the character a show or a role and if we do is it going to be accurate if the answer is no to both of those questions, then leave the Punisher in the comics and never touch the character. Seriously though, if you're so worried about Frank sending the wrong message, that's fine. It's better to leave it untouched than to try to change who he is for the sake of pleasing critics and Karens. If you can't understand that, then maybe it's time to pick up a Punisher comic and learn for yourself. And hey, I'll even link some of the comics in the description. Now I did say I would tell you what you should expect if the MCU introduced the Punisher. And honestly, all I'm relying on is two things. Deadpool getting an R rating for his film, but that's just for the sake of Disney being capable of an R rated film, and Moon Knight getting a mature rating or a TV mature, aka rated R TV. Now, do I know a thing or two about Moon Knight? Hell no. 
but I'm super intrigued and I talked to my boy who is a fan and I've learned that this could work for us because the character isn't quirky, zany, or lighthearted to my understanding. The character, from what I hear, is serious and not a character whose story can be told lightly. So if he does get a TV mature, then I am excited for the possibility that our boy Franklin will see the light of the silver screen again if they can pull this off. Also, Daredevil is also getting another show, so that's another good possibility because Daredevil got a TV mature and that was a really great show. But I digress. Maybe I'll make a Moon Knight video next if anyone likes this video and uh, give you some expectations on why I think it's the most important show for the MCU to date. But look, to put a cap on things, I'll say this. The Punisher story can easily be made more complex when you try to rewrite it or water it down. Now, I'm not saying rip the pages off the comic and use it as a script, but maybe understand where the writers are coming from before deciding to take on Big Frank. Who knows? You might just be the one to finally give us the Punisher we deserve.